Palestinians not going down without a fight. Zionist raids and occupied Nablus, several martyrs executed in the old city of Nablus. Bombs exploding, public assassinations. Arrests all over the West Bank. Crimes against humanity every day. Anybody who's involved with Palestinian liberation knows that anti-Semitism is not tolerated. There are tons of Jews who are involved in the movement and you don't need to be Jewish to be a Zionist. People will be like, Kanye is the biggest threat. Also, let's send billions of dollars to Ukraine for Nazis. Jewish anti-Zionist activists beaten by settlers. Those are the same people who are like, we are worried about the state of Jews. Zionists are not a good source for anti-Semitism. Zionists are a source of anti-Semitism. I am not somebody who believes that the way that you express your Jewishness is by adding another layer to the apartheid wall. Hello and welcome to episode 75 of the Palestine Pod, the weekly podcast where we break down the latest headlines dealing with Palestine from all over the world and bring you stories, commentary, and interviews with the aim of supporting the Palestinian struggle for justice and equal rights. I'm one of your hosts, Lara E. You might know me from Instagram as at Gazan Girl, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mikey B. What's up, y'all? Mikey B on TikTok, Michael Scherzer on Instagram. And you can call me Mikey Intifada if you sign the petition for Adidas to drop Kanye after you nearly beat a 70-year-old Jewish woman to death for picking olives. And it was caught on video. Before we get into today's episode, please like, comment, subscribe if you hang out with us on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast app, subscribe and leave a review. As always, you can find our full episodes and sources on palestinepod.com. And if you want to get involved in the conversation, reach out to us at palestinepod at gmail.com and give us a follow on Instagram at the Palestine Pod. Find us also on Patreon, where you get early access to the Palestine Pod episodes, an additional one to two podcasts per week, including our latest creation, the Patreon Pod. It's a little more laid back. We talk politics, Palestine, pop culture, and get a little more personal. We're also hosting our monthly Zoom happy hours with our Patreon subscribers only. So really exciting stuff. Check us out on patreon.com slash Palestine pod. Today, the Palestinian Ministry of Health reported on October 25th, 2022, that as a result of Zionist raids on occupied Nablus, several martyrs were confirmed. The occupation today killed Hamdi Subayh Ramzi Qaim, Ali Khalid Omar Antar, Hamdi Muhammad Sabri Ahmed Sharaf, Wadi Subayh Ho, Mashal Zadi Baghdadi, and yeah. Qusayt Tamimi, 20 years old. And a major resistance operation occurred in Nablus in the West Bank. Long story short, a detachment of Israeli special forces operators was caught in an ambush in Nablus while reportedly on a mission to assassinate high-ranking officials of a Palestinian resistance group in the area, the Lions of Nablus. Whether or not the ambush was the result of Palestinian resistance organizations being tipped off or just general sloppiness on the Israeli side is yet to be determined. Regardless, the soldiers were quickly surrounded and put under extremely heavy fire by a combination of Palestinian resistance fighters and, interestingly enough, members of the Palestinian Authority. The Israeli response was swift and harsh, with convoys of armored vehicles being sent into Nablus as well as over 90 jeeps being used in the operation to try to save the soldiers. The Israeli Air Force was also brought in, reportedly striking at least one Palestinian vehicle. That reportedly being one of the first times they've done that since the Second Intifada. But even with all of those reinforcements, Israeli forces found themselves unable to control the situation on the ground, and by night's end, they were routed from the city. As a result of this operation, six Palestinians were martyred, with countless others injured. However, there's reportedly at least five deaths from that special forces unit. It'll probably be pretty difficult to figure out the exact amount of Israeli soldiers killed as a result of this operation, given that the Israelis don't really like to talk about their losses. But I think it's safe to say that over the next couple of weeks, the Israeli military is going to report some really unfortunate car crashes all over the West Bank. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. This is a pretty significant victory, though, for the Palestinian resistance. You know, for one, they won the battle, and a W is a W. But on a grander note, it also shows that Israel, even with their most elite forces, with their military fully backing them, are unable to beat a determined people fighting for their liberation. Decolonization is not a question of if, but when. God bless the resistance. So many people in the streets, the funerals of those young men who were killed by the occupation were attended by thousands today in Nablus. People are standing outside of the hospitals where their bodies were taken and it just in mass. There was also another incident where the occupation actually planted a bomb in a vehicle which exploded and killed instantly the young Palestinian brother. One of the tweets we saw reads, the West Bank is on fire. Palestinians are taking to the streets and towns and cities everywhere confronting the Israeli military. Clashes reported in several areas. The military campaign in Nablus continues. 
reports that a car with Palestinian inside was targeted with an explosive. It was at Jalal AK underscore Jojo that reported that two of the individuals who the occupation executed uh, were executed at point blank range before any confrontation with the Lion's Den fighters even began. They were two barbers and they were executed in the well-known old city of Nablus while they were eating knafa when the raiding forces killed them. And these were Hamdi Sharaf and Ali Antar, who we just spoke about. We see videos of heavily armed occupation forces in these in dozens and dozens of, of, of military vehicles raiding Nablus uh, and videos being recorded from apartments in, in, in Nablus. Arrests all over the West Bank, especially of children being dragged and beaten by the occupation while this is taking place in Nablus. And lots of images and videos of live fire showing the military raid on Nablus. And yet people came out in the thousands to the funerals of those individuals who were killed in the night. And all I can think is where does this end? How does this, you know, what what is what is the Zionist plan here? Because the thing is is that Palestinians if anything have shown in the last several weeks, that they're not going to go down without a fight. And every time Zionists think that they can just exercise this amount of force on us and and basically just massacre us into submission, they're always disproven. They're always proven wrong, right? So what's the plan here? Because Palestinians continue to resist. I saw a video last week of a mom who was describing her last moments hearing from her son who had just been who was who 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 was martyred and he called her to say i'm going i'm going i'm going like basically that he had already been shot and that he knew he was dying and he told and he he met, he managed to tell her in a conversation between them if i don't fight for palestine who's going to liberate palestine if i don't go out there and try to liberate Palestine, who's going to liberate Palestine? This is the immense amount of responsibility that our youth feel in Palestine, that if they can't live free, nobody's going to free them, that their life, the the only thing that they can do with it then is to dedicate it to that cause because there isn't anything for them to do in life under occupation. I watched an interview with Dina Takuri. She was interviewing Ahed Tamimi in honor of their new book, which came out. And Dina asked Ahed, do you feel like you lost your childhood? And she's like, forget about childhood. Her response was, when you live under occupation, and I'm paraphrasing, but when you live under occupation, you lose everything. You lose your whole life. How could she lose something she was never afforded? She was never afforded a childhood. She had to confront soldiers as a child. Rodei Tamimi, 22 years old, shot and killed by Zionist forces on October 19th after he had evaded the occupation for 11 days and after sparking a new chapter of resistance across Palestine. Odeya Tamimi was the individual who sparked the whole Palestinian men shaving their head in the camps to try to throw off the occupation because he was the one they were looking for. And he managed to escape the occupation forces for almost two weeks before he came back again and did a second act of resistance, which is what led to him being killed by the occupation. Yeah, he went out swinging as best he could. He tried to reload, nothing but respect. So Odei Tamimi was 22 years old, and he was shot and killed by Zionist forces on October 19th after taking up arms and resisting the occupation at the Shafat checkpoint on October 8th. In response, of course, Zionist forces put the camp under siege, trapping over 130,000 Palestinians inside as they desperately tried to find him. And of course, they failed. And Palestinians, in response, carried out massive campaigns of shaving their heads to thwart the occupation forces. He managed to evade them for almost two weeks and resurfaced on October 19th with a gun in hand 10 kilometers away from the camp and was shot and killed while exchanging gunfire with Zionist forces at the entrance of an illegal settlement. 
resisting until the very end. According to local media, his body was kidnapped by the occupation forces after he was pronounced dead and is still being withheld from this, his family, a common tactic that the Zionists do all the time. In response to his killing, a general strike was observed all across Jerusalem, the West Bank, Janine Nables, and Khalil, and El Khalil in honor of Oday, in order to um, honor his heroic struggle against the occupation. He wrote a will and he left his handwritten will, which was found. And in it, he wrote, I am the wanted Oday Tamimi from the camp of martyrs, Shafat. My operation at the Shafat military checkpoint was a mere drop in the ocean of struggle. I know that I will be martyred sooner or later. And I know that I did not liberate Palestine with this operation, but I carried it out with a clear objective that the operation will move hundreds of youth to pick up arms after I'm gone. Ibrahim Nabosi said, don't put down the gun. And Tamimi heard him and answered the call. Yeah. People are now turning towards Zionists for info about anti-Semitism. And it's like Zionists are not a good source for anti-Semitism. Zionists are a source of anti-Semitism. It's very frustrating to be an anti-Zionist Jew right now in this situation where people are continually conflating Judaism and Zionism. Like I thought we'd done a good job of detangling them for the most part the last year or so, but it seems like people have learned literally nothing. No, these people like stopantisemitism.com and Eve Bartlow, they are not good sources of information. They are anti-Palestinian and they are violent. They support violence and they do not respect racial justice just for like an aesthetic. It's a costume that they wear so that they can go on the other side of the apartheid gates. Yeah. I mean, look, look at what happened to that Jewish anti-Zionist activist, right? Who was like beaten by settlers. 70 year old woman Hagar was beaten nearly to death. Zionist settlers attacked Palestinian and Israeli volunteers during the olive harvest in the village of Kisan, east of Bethlehem. One of the volunteers was beaten with a baton and was taken to the hospital. Her property and the camera of another volunteer were stolen. The activists were accompanying local Palestinians who were tending to their olive trees. They started harvesting early to avoid threats from settlers. Earlier in the day, those same settlers had destroyed nearly 300 saplings and permanently damaged trees is using chemical solutions. Zionist colonization continues unabated under the apartheid regime. Palestinian land, trees, and dignity is being robbed from them. This is from Ahmed Eldin, one of the pod alumni. She has internal bleeding and stuff. She is in a very bad position right now. And those are the same people who are like, we are worried about the state of Jews. It's like, oh, okay, well, not that one. You know what I mean? Because you, uh -huh. you, be, you nearly beat her to death. Right. That's what they do. Zionists get so mad about anti-Semitism when they're not the ones who get to do it. Like, if anybody else is doing anti-Semitism, they are immediately on them. But if it's them doing anti-Semitism, they're like, oh, actually, this is cool and good. We like this. Yes, I saw what you just posted about what happened to you on TikTok. I get messages all of the time where they are anti-Semitic towards me. And then it's like... I have friends who are in positions of power, you know, and they're seeking information about anti-Semitism and their businesses are just turning towards Zionist organizations. And even when I try and inform them that there's like a diversity of opinion about Zionism in Judaism, right? They hit me back with like, well, my person who works for like an Israel policy board, let me know that like those people are Zionists and they just want a two-state solution. And I was like, I mean, if that's what's easier for you to believe, then that's fine. But that's not the case, right? There are tons of Jews who support Palestine and anti-Semitism has nothing to do with anti-Zionism. And it's like anti-Semitism is very alive, right? We see it on the 405 with Nazis saluting. We see it in the White House, right? We see it in Ukraine. We see it in Russia. There are Nazis literally everywhere. It's like NATO is a Nazi organization. Adidas, a Nazi organization. Hugo Boss, a Nazi organization. Not like Nazis are gone. And so <laughs> it's weird that people will be like, 
Kanye is the biggest threat. Also, let's send billions of dollars to you. Ukraine for Nazis. And somebody said to me recently, they were like, not everybody over there is a Nazi. It's just like a little bit of Nazis. I was like, I didn't realize we had like a threshold that was acceptable for Nazis. How many Nazis is a good amount? Are we like, what's the number? I'm so curious. Thought we were doing no Nazis, but it seems like if you're like a diet Nazi, if you are like a Nazi light, it's like, oh, that's cool. Let's send them billions of dollars, actually, while people in the United States don't drink water. What about that? It's like, what? That doesn't seem like good economic spending policy. Right. We'll take a half a Nazi, but you got to cut him in half. <laughs> right. Fuck Kanye. Kanye's being like taken down this weird right wing rabbit hole, being fleeced for all of his money by Candace Owens right now. She just got him to buy her husband's app at a time when the things that she's instructing him to say is getting him dropped from literally everywhere. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. One of the things Kanye started doing in his latest interviews is talk about Zionists. It almost seems like this is something that now is going to make Zionists be like, look, he's using the word Zionist. So actually, yes. because he also uses the word, you know, because he also targets Jewish people, Zionism and Judaism is the same thing. And because he's anti-Semitic and he's now talking about Zionists, well, being anti-Zionist is also anti-Semitic. A hundred percent and a great, great observation. Kanye is being controlled by Zionists. What he's done is he's given a gift to the ADL, right? right. To those people who are like, Anti-Zionism, anti-Semitism, same thing. Right. What he, what Kanye has done is like parade around in a way that validates that message. Yes. When anybody who's involved with Palestinian liberation knows that anti-Semitism is not tolerated, there are tons of Jews who are involved in the movement, and you don't need to be Jewish to be a Zionist. I'm quoting Joe Biden. So for me, it's interesting they where he said DEFCON 3. And he said against Jewish people, the next interview he did, he was only talking about Zionists. And I was like, hmm, why are you doing that? Right after you just made like the most horrible, disgusting anti-Semitic comments, the next interview you do, you just talk about Zionists. I don't think for one second that he actually knows what a Zionist is. He said the only thing that should be taught in schools is engineering, like sound <laughs> engineering. Okay. He was like, we don't need to learn history. And I was like, clearly you do, right? Like, this is a tough one for you. Right. I just thought it was curious how he goes from targeting Jewish people to targeting Zionists all in the same week. And it's like that narrative supports only Zionists. Yes. The ADL was having a very hard time justifying their budget before Kanye did these interviews, right? They were actually making up events of anti-Semitism to justify what they do. And now Kanye has given them a gift wrapped basket of anti-Semitism to just like parade around and be like, see, we told you. If you're looking at it from an operation perspective, they've done a very good job of regaining ground in the public image, right? Or in the mm -hmm. public discussion, because for the longest time we were making ground intellectually. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is basically regain a ton of foot they just mixed it all up they just mix it all up because right after after that first interview everybody was like kanye is anti-semitic kanye is anti-semitic everybody had it in their brain that kanye was an anti-semite the ne very next interview it's all zionism 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 erasing hundreds of years of jewish opposition to zionism Remember how Jews have been anti-zionist way longer than zionist used to be a religion where we all lived peacefully cared about justice broke bread together then zionists came through started murdering people stealing their houses really fucked a lot of shit up i wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't make it out alive because it can't end, like it's not why wouldn't end he? well he's 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 literally doing the bidding of the powers that be but I, he doesn't I, know it yeah i, I he's I, not I, like he's not like a radical free thinker if he got on there yeah. and he said like free palestine you know yeah, what i mean sure, maybe sure. Sure. But he's 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 doing he's towing the line for like what the Zionists need. Sure. No, I just say because like it's like this downhill spiral, right? He gets dropped by all these contracts. He doesn't have a bank like, uh, you know, it's 
nobody wants to work with him. It's like oh, he might he might end up poor. Yeah, but he's not. He might. I don't think he's gonna die. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's happens. just yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot, and I'm thank you for sharing all of that and being emotionally present yeah. in this moment. It's like a lot to unload. To be an anti-Zionist Jew in this moment where so many people are conflating Judaism and Zionism and then people are only listening to Zionists about anti-Semitism, it's extremely frustrating because these people are some of the largest exporters of anti-Semitism. They call me a self-hating Jew. They call me a capo, which is a person who coordinated with the Nazis for caring about Palestinian children. They try and delegitimize my Judaism because I believe in the core ideas of justice. I believe in Tikkun Olam, and I am not somebody who believes that the way that you express your Jewishness is by adding another layer to the apartheid wall. You don't have to love a terrorist state in order to be Jewish. That's an insane anti-Semitic idea. Zionism itself is rooted in anti-Semitism. It's the idea that Jews will never be safe. They need to separate from the rest of society. It's literally the segregation. On top of segregation, it's superiority. You need to be separate and above. That there are Jews who are separate and above. That's literally the fucking conspiracy. And then they're like, well, we'll manifest it with real gates and guns. I was actually talking to a native person recently, and they were talking about how when they apply to writing jobs, there's always somebody who who's like, wow, it's like not native enough. Or like, what's your native sample look like? You're like the thing that they're discussing. And they're like, yeah, you're not that enough. It's infuriating. Yeah, you're not filling the role. You're not checking off the boxes that we need you to check off. Easier for them to just believe what is convenient than it is to process what's actually happening and listen to anti-Zionist, anti-racist Jewish voices. Like, they would rather somebody who oversees the police training program in the occupation, which is the ADL, that is their role in the police exchange. They oversee it. And then you're going to talk to the people who oversee the people who murder people in the United States every single day about racial and economic justice. Those are the people that you turn to in this moment. The people who are literally funding settler violence, where the settlers will come down, the soldiers will present a target and tell them where to throw a tear gas canister or a grenade. That's the people who you bring to the table when they're like, we need to talk about anti-Semitism. It's fucking infuriating. And I'm talking about friends that I have. People who I know are like, they're trying to do good on the inside, but they just don't want to deal with anything that's too complicated. And I think they also know that if they push too far, they'll lose their job. I think they know that. And so they're like, it's easier for me to accept the reality that's been presented than the reality that is. I feel like this is your Michael goes off moment. Your voice is so necessary, Michael. That's so funny because the internet keeps censoring it. Right. But that's and then the it's point, like, right? yeah. And then it's like people in positions of power are like, actually, you're not the guy to turn to right now. You're a little bit too controversial, is what I'm hearing. Or they don't even say anything. You know what I mean? It's just a very polite, like, hey, good to see you again. We know what you do. We're going to not say anything to you. Because I see these people at parties. No, it is. It is extremely necessary. And there are so many young Jewish people that are looking up to you in this moment and are making their way through navigating these issues. And they at least have a role model who who is here, who is doing it. I mean, and, there's so many that have come before me that have yes, done way more. You know yes. what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to do my You're part. You're just trying to do your part. I get that. I get that. But I, but, but look, we are in this age of social media and there are people that are looking at their phones, young people, and they're, they see your videos and it gives them some sense of hope and relief. And I think that that is something. And yes, you're absolutely right. I'm not saying you invented this, right? <laughs> That's no. not the point. Yeah. The point is, is that you're a space, you're a person, you, you're a platform, you're, you, you present the ideas to them in a way that, that clicks for them and your voice is necessary. And and that's exactly why they're trying so much effort to censor it. And there's so much effort to hide it because that message is capable of changing things. That Sarah Silverman video got taken down off TikTok the second I posted it. Yep. I was like, oh, wow, that was quick. Even for TikTok. 
Yeah. That means right. they're literally monitoring like when I post. Like the right. second I post, they get a notification and they're like, nope, <laughs> we struck a deal with TikTok actually. You don't exist on this platform. Right. And in that video, you laid bare that everything she said was a lie. Oh, oh, absolutely. What she said was a lie. She repeated one of the most blatantly false headlines that I've ever read in media. She repeated that Berkeley Law had created Jew free zones, which was not even supported by Zionist organizations. When you have Zionists tell you that you are lying, you are fucking lying, okay? Because Zionists love a good lie, their whole existence, identity built on a lie. So when they are like, that's too much, that's actually a pretty good metric. Right. And you fact check that and you posted the response clear for everyone to see. And instead of allowing your video to remain and for the audience to choose and decide and to assess the evidence and to see what they thought about it in the aftermath, the video disappeared in seconds. And I actually had friends reach out to me, send me the Sarah Silverman video and be like, oh my God, this is horrible what she's saying. I wish somebody would respond to her. And I'm like, well, incidentally... (laughs) Michael did respond to her and his video is gone. So, and it's like, even though Instagram will keep my videos up, I am severely shadow banned to where my videos don't pop up for people. I'm almost never on anybody's feed. If you type my full name, sometimes it doesn't even come up. Exactly. It's like, damn, bro. This happens to Palestinians and Palestinian activist organizations all the time. Meta's own report was like, yeah, we censored Palestinians. What have we seen the last couple of weeks? I on Palestine, one of the biggest accounts on all of Instagram with 3 million followers, woke up one morning, deleted, and then they mount this big social media campaign to get their account back. They eventually got it back. But why do we have to go through this? How do you just delete a page with 3 million followers that is showing the world videos and photos of life on the ground in Palestine every single day? spreading the message of who the occupation has murdered. What are the raids that are happening in Palestine right now? What houses is the occupation demolishing today? And basically documenting all of their crimes for the world to see. Can you delete that page for what? What crime are they guilty of committing? The thing about the community guidelines is it's guidelining a specific community. It's not for everyone. And we are learning that clearly day by day, as Palestinians are murdered, deleted from the internet, censored, fired from their jobs. And then it's like, if you say anything about that, you are rough territory, friend. You might want to turn back. (laughs) Might want to, might want to not head down that road. I'll tell you what. Let's just do the whole episode. (laughs) You're not welcome around here vibes, you know? Yeah. Whenever you start to say anything about Palestinian liberation or the the crimes against humanity that are happening literally every day in Palestine, bodies being dropped on the street, bombs exploding in public areas, public assassinations literally every day. And they're like, shut up. Shut it up. Yeah. Yeah. Because there were Nazis on the 405, you know? Right, right, And so I was like, I always take the 10 freeway. I prefer that anyway. That's very hard to advertise Nazism on the 10 freeway. Nazi free. Not free, because they still drive on it. They use the freeway. (laughs) But like just the the neighborhoods that they'd have to go through with their Nazi stuff, not as welcoming (laughs) as the 405. 405, they're like, we don't even need to drive. We walked there. (laughs) Oh, I noticed that like the in the picture with all of the Nazis, there was one lady Nazi at the oh, end. Okay. I don't know if anybody I have a very like attention to detail type of yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. And I noticed there was one woman Nazi and I was just like, wow, Nazism, such a male dominated sphere, right? Like <laughs> when will female Nazis break through and girl boss their way into Hugo Boss? Yeah, there she is. Just yeah, one. she's on the she's on the side. Yeah, one lady Nazi. Yeah, that's white feminism. And did you notice there was like a, another Nazi on the other end? That like yeah, he's with he's the like main kind of, of Nazis. Not allowed with the main group. I noticed that. Yeah, he's like, in a he's in a time he's in a Nazi timeout. There was like ten Nazis, and then there was like one Nazi. What is that? Yeah, you'd think Nazis would like stick together closely, but he was he was spread out. Very Swedish, very Nordic of him. 
Man. So they wrote horrible things. Yikes. This is so disgusting. Did they get arrested? No, nothing happened to them. They were probably cops. Isn't it interesting how nobody's asked that question? I mean, there are tons of white supremacists, Nazis, in police departments in Los Angeles. A lot of police departments are infiltrated by Nazis. And you can't even really say infiltrated anymore because it's like they are breeding grounds for Nazis. They recruit Nazis and then they empower them. Look at this. It's very strange. CNN, when they reported on this, they wrote, Los Angeles officials are condemning the display of banners from a freeway overpass by a group of demonstrators showing support for anti-Semitic comments. Okay, but thank you, Los Angeles officials, but what, what, what did you do about it? Those same Los Angeles officials who are like, Gascon is with the blacks. In LA politics, Nuri Martinez had to resign recently because she had an audio leaked of her being anti-black and racist and stepped down recently. And now there have been protests nearly every day outside of LA City Council. They won't let them meet. The citizens are throwing their bodies in front of the municipal buildings and like stopping the meetings because they want everybody to resign. Even Gavin Newsom has come out and asked a number of people to resign. They want De Leon to resign. They want Mitch O'Farrell to resign. They want pretty much everybody with the exception of like Mike Bonin and Nithya Raman to resign. And uh, shouts out to them. Fuck all of the city council. They've been murdering black people in LA with impunity and then wiping it under the rug, cleared the streets of homeless people by putting them in jail. They just like sweep people off the streets and then put them in jail cells because they are incentivized by private prisons to fill those beds. Like there's actual funding with Project Room Key and other resources to house the homeless in places like motels and hotels and things of that nature. But because the police budget wants to get justified, they sweep the streets of homeless people and basically just kidnap impoverished people and lock them in cages. And that is Los Angeles for you folks. They're like, it's kind of ugly to see homeless people. And I'm like, well, maybe fix inequality then. And they're like, nope, what's easier is private prisons. What's better is basically slavery. They've got people working for pennies in there for the state. Like, it's forced labor. Is that that tweet that I saw today about somebody who was saying that their sister was locked up and that she was going to be working for like 40 cents on some prison farm? And yeah, she was probably. like, she's like, I can't believe slavery is still happening. I'm literally working on a plantation. 13th Amendment to the Constitution says that you're not allowed to do slavery except for as a punishment of a crime. And so all of the slave plantation owners got that memo and were like, "Okay, we'll do private prisons. How about that? Mm, No, this is the tweet. My, My sister was transferred to a prison work farm in Virginia where she'll serve out her sentence. It's one of the nicer prisons. She'll be required to labor eight hours a day for 45 cents an hour. I can't believe it. It's 2022 and I'm really a slave on a plantation is what she said. Yeah, it's uh, hey, they made a documentary about that, didn't they? Hey, and guess what? The police who have been involved in all of this, who have been essential in kidnapping human bodies to turn them into slaves for private prisons, those people are overseen by the ADL. That's the transfer program where they go to the occupation and they learn counterterrorism techniques that they then use on impoverished people in Los Angeles and all across the U.S. Those are the people that are now getting a platform to discuss anti-Semitism. What? How do you take time out of jailing black youth to discuss anti-Semitism? Like, where do you find the time? How do you take time off of beating 70-year-old women nearly to death to lecture people about anti-Semitism? Where do you find the time? How do you take the time from murdering Palestinians in cold blood and then justifying their death through a bunch of bullshit legal aids to lecture about anti-Semitism, to to call yourself an anti-racist, to call yourself an authority on anything except literal fucking murder? They're like, we are experts on anti-Semitism because we do it the best, actually. We're better than you at it. We're better than everyone. That's why we need to be separate and apart and above. But also, if you believe that Jews want to be separate and apart and above, you are engaging in anti-Semitism. Isn't that a neat trick? Isn't that a, isn't that better? Shouts out Patrice O'Neill.
there are like, anti-Semites who exist everywhere, but like largely in the Palestine liberation movement, it's not tolerated. It's completely shut down anytime any inkling of anti-Semitism even arises. Like I remember I was at a protest and somebody like was started to lead a chant and they were like, the Jew and literally like a mob formed around yeah. them of Palestinians yeah. who were like, no, 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 that's not what we do. So I've seen it shut down before it even starts. Whereas like Zionists will be openly anti-Semitic forever and it never has anybody checking them because it's like they're the experts on anti-Semitism. <laughs> they're the experts. Always turn to the experts. You know what I mean? That's what we've learned over the last few years. Uh, wow. It's a lot. It's a lot. This is yeah. a heavy one. Usually, you're the one that goes to therapy here. <laughs> yeah, except uh, now I'm Today, the it's therapist. <laughs> I am the therapist now. And I'm like, I don't think I make a good therapist because I'm just like, <laughs> wow. Oh, I are you? Sh wow. Okay. <laughs> well, that's actually, I prefer that over really? like bad advice from a therapist. Yeah. You know, I kind of need to just go off for a bit. And that's what I need. It's good to know that it's not just me like screaming into the ether. Like this will resonate with people. This yes. message will get proliferated. And, you know, it certainly won't like balance out the overwhelming opinions of Zionists who largely dominate the conversation about anti-Semitism, but it will add a little counterbalance, which is all we ever intended to do with this podcast. Absolutely. You know, people are like, oh, you didn't, you didn't free Palestine with your little podcast. And it's like, no, well, you didn't free Palestine with your fucking sarcasm and non-activism either. But like, we are doing what we can from where we are. Well, anyone should ever be doing is what they can from where they are. You literally can't do anything else. All you can do yeah. is what you can from where you are. They're like, no, you need to be able to do everything. And it's like, if I was in Palestine, I would pick up a rock, but I'm here. So this is what I do. I saw this amazing tweet by It's Yasmin al Hajj, which said, can't believe colonizing Palestine didn't end the global problem of anti-Semitism. Yeah, that's how you become my mutual on Instagram. <laughs> really well said. Because the idea that Zionists believe that they can militarize their way into safety is really at the intersection of what we're talking about, right? It's a discussion about anti-Semitism where one solution is guns and Jewish superiority, and the other one is reckoning with real racial and economic justice, which means talking about Palestinians and stolen Palestinian land. It means talking about the return of refugees, talking about not making a land that has always been multi-ethnic, multi-racial, and multi-religious into a ethno-state. You can't truly talk about anti-Semitism unless you're talking about how Zionism is a source of anti-Semitism. Like if that is a blinder for your discussions on anti-Semitism, then you're actually just talking about oppression. Because what's the answer? Is it more police funding so you can beef up those budgets of your training program that you oversee? Is it private prisons so that we can keep slavery going? Is it the literal apartheid regime that blows people up any time that they feel like planting a bomb, shooting a drone, and nobody talks about that? And that's not going to be a part of your discussion of where some of this hatred for alleged Jewish Zionists comes from. Created an apparatus that tries to call itself a representative of Judaism, but then takes anybody to task who makes that association. You've created an anti Semitic state of Jewish superiority where you fulfilled long-standing Jewish conspiracies of creating people who are separate and above, making decisions for the rest of people. Like, the idea that Kanye thinks we control the banks or whatever, super don't care about that. What I care about is that we're sending billions of dollars to literal Nazis in Ukraine so that they can fight other Nazis in Russia, so that NATO, a Nazi organization, can continue to expand its power so that U.S. imperialism is king, so that the U.S. dollar is king, so that access to pipelines 
runs through the United States and its fucking allies. It's like mafia behavior. You know what I mean? Where it's like, hey, it'd be a shame if anything happened to your pipeline. What if we took a lead pipe to your pipeline? What if we bombed the fucking Nord Stream pipeline? What if we funded extremists to go into various territories, overthrow the people who are in charge, and then we can implant little dictators who will help us in this whole scheme to control the pipelines? But if you say anything about that, you're not welcome here, boy. You better turn around. You better, you better trust the experts and turn the fuck around. Michael, I have nothing to add. You're just on fire. You're literally on I went, fire. I went super Saiyan just now. You- they are the Jewish ISIS. The Zionists are. They pulled up like 150 years ago with guns talking about like, we're the real Jews. And it's like, no, no, you're not. No, you're not. First of all, the real Jews barely use the internet. You know what I mean? They don't <laughs> fucking, they just <laughs> yeah. sit in a damn temple and read the Torah all day. Like, <laughs> Right, right. They, <laughs> The real, real Jews are the ones who are actually protesting against getting drafted into the occupation army. Not necessarily because they fuck with Palestinians, just because they don't believe that they're meant to be that. Like They believe that they're meant to study the Torah, and then all of the other people are meant to uphold apartheid. And now they're protesting. And there's also, there's some people, I should say, who are protesting out of conscience, right? Who are like, we don't want to support the oppression of Palestinians. There are Israeli kids who are refusing to sign up and... Shouts out to them. That takes a ton of courage. There is no two states. Two states is dead. Literally anybody who knows anything about this knows that it's dead because they've already transferred 750,000 illegal settlers in violation of the UN to occupied territories, to the West Bank, which is even by the weirdo extremists understood to be Palestine because they still have to take it. So it's like, if you're still talking about the two state solution, you are actually talking about a fiction. And what you're doing is you're creating space for the people who are writing reality to fill that void, right? You're allowing people like Ben Giver to get fucking hosted by Zara, you know? And then write legislation while he's also on the ground pulling guns on Palestinians in their neighborhoods. That's what you allow for when you talk about fantasy, when you talk about things that don't exist, and you're worried about things that are distracting you from policy, which is resulting in the murder, displacement, captivity of people, both in Palestine and in the United States. And I think the question is always like, what are we fighting for, right? We're fighting for freedom. We're fighting to be able to like move in our land freely, to be able to visit our family members and our friends without having to pass through checkpoints. We're fighting to not have our houses demolished. That's what we want. That's when we think of a free Palestine, that's what we want. That's what we're fighting for. We're fighting to be able to have passports that allow us to move places and to, you know, enter and exit without problem. We're fighting to be able to, you know, go to school without having, you know, the streets sprayed with skunk water. We're fighting to be able to get jobs, have families, do all the regular stuff, the regular boring mundane stuff that people do in their lives and achieve all of those things that, you know, people across the globe are are able to do. That's what we're fighting for. What are the Zionists fighting for? The Zionists are fighting to maintain Jewish supremacy in Palestine. The, The Zionists are fighting to maintain the ethno state. The Zionists are fighting to keep the checkpoints, to keep the wall up to keep being able to bulldoze our houses and to uproot our olive trees and to spray the land with skunk water. We don't spray the land with skunk water. That's what they do. We don't kidnap and arrest children. We're not the only country in the world that puts children in military courts. That's what the apartheid state does. That's what Israel does. We don't do that. We're fighting to be able to free our children from that. That's what we're fighting for. So then put those causes side by side and see which one is the noble cause. You can't possibly find any moral equivalency in a people who are fighting to free themselves from oppression and a people who are fighting to continue to oppress. Well, if you listen to the experts, actually, it turns out that you're wrong. Also, you're not welcome here. And that is (laughs) the title of the episode. (laughs) Yeah, they're fighting so that literally any Jew born anywhere can go vacation while people who were born there can't even visit. And that sounds good to them. That sounds great. That's how they like it. 
that that's like great. the ideal for them. They're like, oh yeah, this is what? What's the problem? Why are people so upset? Also, this whole thing about Adidas being a Nazi company now, like everybody all of, all of a sudden knows that today, like yeah. just today. They were like, we're cutting ties with Kanye. And everyone's like, oh, that's so interesting because you're literally a Nazi company. And, and like, nobody knew that before. Well, Jews knew it. Like, well, we've all been saying that for the, a while. But the main it had not entered the mainstream public consciousness. Yeah. There's Today, a ton of, you know, a ton of corporations that are responsible for funding the Nazis. Coca-Cola. Or were founded by Nazis. Right. The United States government. You're like Adidas, America. Prescott Bush, the father of George H.W. Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush. What did he do? Funded the Nazis. Wow. Henry Ford funded the Nazis. Coco Chanel, Nazi. Nazis managed to have better PR than... People who are literally being murdered. Well, here's the thing about Nazis is they were actually always pretty good at PR. That was sort of their thing. They had a ministry of information. They were great at propaganda videos. They managed to convince people that Jews were the problem. Really, all they did was flip the script, right? And be like, actually, we're Jews now. Right. So now you can't say anything. Even though we're still Nazis, we're Jews. And also, we're going to be the experts when it comes to talking about Jews and anti-Semitism. And if you say anything about that, you're not welcome here, boy. You better turn right around. Because these Nazis are the expert. These Nazis, they know about anti-Semitism. They know about <laughs> fighting anti-Semitism. And if you got anything to say about that, well, I tell you what, you, you, you're not welcome around here anymore. You non-Jew, you... <laughs> You self-hating Jew. There is just so many layers. They're like, you don't question the money going to Ukraine. I'll tell you what. You just choke on that water in Mississippi. This is a this whole thing is a you episode. This week is is just you. And it needs to be you. It's 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 your moment. It really shouldn't be because Nablus is under siege. Shuafat refugee camp is still under siege. There are martyrs in Palestine literally every day. In addition to that, now we have the people responsible for those murders lecturing about anti-racism and anti-Semitism in the United States. It's a mind fuck. You ever have a Nazi give a lecture about anti-Semitism? I don't know what's going to be what, but the episode's going to pop. I don't know what's going to be what either. And I'll, I, I. Yeah, you're spent. I can tell. I'm. <laughs> you're like, I listened to it all and it took a lot out of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know how I feel and I just listened to it. Yeah. And you, but then again, you needed to get it out. So <laughs> thank you, Michael, for your energy. Yeah. Well, I hope this was a minimal, minimally cathartic. In the words of Norman Finkelstein, if you had any heart, you would be crying for the Palestinians. And that's like, as a Jew, as a proud anti Zionist Jew, I am both scared for the Jewish community. In this resurgence of Nazism, it's not really even a resurgence because you can't call it a comeback. They've been here for years. My heart is with people who are realizing how prolific Nazism is in our culture, who are waking up to that. And I urge you not to listen to the voices who are engaging in oppression, land theft, and murder every day as experts on how to combat anti-semitism thank y'all so much for listening to another episode of the palestine pod you can check out our full episodes and sources at palestinepod.com follow us on instagram at the palestine pod and check us out on patreon www.patreon.com slash palestine pod folks that has been another episode of the palestine pod thank you all so much for listening genuinely have a great day Doo-doo-doo.